Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks, aka Escape in the Matrix. In this Tech Talk episode, I welcome on my guest, Miss Migalina, aka Tech Valor. Migalina is a big tech enthusiast doing tutorial videos on YouTube. She also has her own Gadget Chats podcast, which I recommend you all go check out. And she does, uh, she creates custom digital pieces for your logos and or streaming goods. Welcome onto the show, Migalina. Thank you for having me. Um, like I told you before this started, this is my first interview, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm also very excited. No. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the big thing. I'm, I'm a big proponent of diversity when it comes to tech and I'm my entire career. You know, if you listen to my other but I'm, I've been in tech for over 20 years. So for me, I like to see a range of people getting into technology. And one thing I don't see a lot of, what I'm starting to see the pickup now is like women. Because all the departments I've worked in, like I've worked in the department of 300 plus people and, and in it 300 plus people, we might only had like 20 people, 20 women in the entire department. And they weren't even doing half the technical stuff that we were doing. So yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself and then, you know, how you got started to tech. Um, so it was basically self-taught curiosity. Uh, when I was 11 years old, I was in a program where we were allowed to have laptops and take home during the weekend. And that sparked my curiosity about technology. I'd always like tinkered with like, you know, the VCR, the PS and all that stuff, like different things here and there. But mm -hmm. having a laptop was a completely different experience. And it didn't connect to the internet when I had, when I did take it at home, mm -hmm. but just the potential that I would see, um, like for example, I use paint. Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft Paint at the time and then I took a picture of Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and I put them together and I was like if only I could you know like I saw the potential that's so corny um, so no. that <laughs> sparked my interest with technology <laughs> and then um, as then I would get a little bit more then I was starting to get a little bit more freedom you know we moved from having a laptop at home to having like an actual desktop at home mm -hmm. that was actually connected to the internet and I was like this is so cool like i would just read stuff and at the time you couldn't really watch videos because that was you know, right uh, back in the yeah early, you're not saying the go ahead <laughs> sorry uh, back in the early 2000s but um i would i found out that if you just go on the internet people were just giving out information so mm -hmm. i would just start going to different websites that's when they would have like web rings web rings is uh basically it's kind of like a playlist but a playlist but for the internet so for example like i wanted it to know more about final fantasy 7 and the characters and they would ha each website would have a web ring and they would Ooh. recommend other websites that you can go to and so you know they had also guest books and then people were writing the guest books like hey i have this website and you can learn this and i'm like oh cool so i would go so that was kind of like the before google that was kind of like the google of it all the web rings mm -hmm. and then it just went through there and through there. Yeah. so wait 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 you a gamer too yes i do I, I mean i game but i'm not like on the internet gaming but i do enjoy no. mobile gaming right now and mm -hmm. I, i'm a spectator but i don't i don't do like hardcore gaming right now I'm I'm stuck on a mobile web game, which is called American Dad Apocalypse Soon, where you kind of have like a base of aliens that mm -hmm. fight other aliens. Because um, you're probably looking at a live stream, right, that I have on my uh, um, on my channel where I did gaming. Mm -mm, you just said Final Fantasy oh, okay. Seven. So when you said Final Fantasy Seven, oh, my radar scary. is like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, normally, oh, oh my goodness. Most people, yeah. you know, <laughs> So, and I say that because, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for somebody to do some gaming talk with too. And it's hard to yeah, find yeah. people to actually, that's, that's, you know, got a good personality and want to come and talk about video games. So you said gaming, I'm like, mm -hmm. hey. Yeah. And I love Final so, Fantasy VII. I have a twin sister and we got uh, Final Fantasy VIII. And the mm -hmm. reason why we got Final Fantasy VIII was because I was at the store with my grandmother and I was like, oh, I really want to play Final Fantasy VII. But then I mm -hmm. got confused and I picked Final Fantasy VIII, right? 
So I was like, I'm not going to tell her to, to, to return it and, and get the correct one, right? So we just played the game, but I wanted it to know about Final Fantasy VII. So that's why mm-hmm. I would go to the library and go to different web rings and I would come in with my floppy disks and, you know, put, it, put the information in my floppy disks. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, you aging yourself real quick. <laughs> yeah. Because you're talking about floppy disks, you said VCR. I'm like... Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Technology, like in the past, what, 20 years have come a long way. A lot of yeah, things have become obsolete, but that's that's the great thing about technology is that it's evolving and that we can kind of shed some things and just go on with what actually works. Right. Yeah, it's, I'm curious now, like what's sparking this whole retro movement now? Like the old, the new, uh, they remaking the Atari 2600. They made the old uh, Nintendo 64. And I'm like... Why? I said, we already lived through that. <laughs> I was like, so well, what's, what's... Things always happen in cycle. Like, I've even yeah. noticed that with music, my daughters, they're currently listening to um, older music. Mm-hmm. What is it called again? I'm trying to think. I can't Not think 70s, of though. Genre. Yes. Like jazz? Yes. They're Blues? Listening to, yes. Jazz. Yup. Jazz. Disco. Um... Uh, 80s type music and it's just but it's more modernized kind of like how mm-hmm. you look at you go to youtube and you find like slowed down music of certain things that's just basically what was it that i called it before yeah like the lo-fi hip-hop stuff yeah the lo-fi hip-hop is basically jazz for gen z like that's all that it really is yeah but i actually like this stuff everything like always Callen. happens in cycles mm-hmm. i remember um i think it was 10 years old flares mm-hmm. Was the thing like jeans with the bell bottoms? Yeah, but they called it flares, and it's yeah. like okay, it's it's not flares, it's bell bottoms. But okay, this is what you want to call it. Let's go for and it. They're back out too. I actually saw some of those at my uh, kid's graduation yesterday. <laughs> hey, I was like, yeah. you wearing those? Too? I said I couldn't believe it. it was a kid wearing it to the graduation in her outfit. So I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> Well, I think also because technology is so much more accessible, it's not it's not just for the nerds, right? It's not just mm-hmm. for the people. It's for just about every regular day people. They use technology more often. So it would make sense that they would want to try out the older version of technology to see what it was like. And mm-hmm. not only to see how technology has come a long way, but sometimes the these video games are just too complicated. You just need to just play an 8-bit type of game and <laughs> those games are hard them. though like i picked yeah, up ghouls and it, Goblin. the mechanics are simple yeah yeah but you don't know, even like i said i just picked up ghouls and goblins for the nintendo switch and i kind of forgot how hard that game was until i started playing i was like jesus christ this why i never beat the game back in the day <laughs> i was like this game is games back there for us were way harder than the games today and i don't know if just because people complained about them or they've become so expensive but yeah it was normally what we had two or three buttons to push and that was it yeah. either jump and attack or jump and attack and whatever else another move and that was it now these kids yeah like i do pc gaming so you got all kind of controls and stuff that you have to remember even on controllers you got your left right dot, bottom to, it's all kind of stuff now so yeah. you know your, your youtube page so you like content you start making uh videos and stuff what inspires you to actually make content for youtube um, I always wanted it to do YouTube ever since mm-hmm. YouTube came out, but the things that I liked to do at the time was not advisable. I used to like to make anime music videos. That's what, that's what they were called. So basically uh-huh. it's you take an anime and mm-hmm. then you take a song and then you take bits and pieces of it, of the video and you put it to the music, right? Mm-hmm. So that was my thing. But then YouTube started cracking down because obviously you're taking yeah. copyrighted material and copyrighted material. And so uh, YouTube was like taking down people's pages and stuff. So um, I used to do that before YouTube was a thing, right? And then mm-hmm. when I first created my YouTube channel, I started uploading some of the things that I used to do back then. Cause the way that I would share my videos before, my anime music videos was through torrents before mm-hmm. YouTube came around. So I would Ooh. link people to my torrents and be like, hey, I made a video, come watch it. Here's my torrent, right? And then people would download it and be like, oh, cool. And I uploaded some of them. And then 
right away I noticed that some of my friends that were making them, their channels were getting taken down. And mm-hmm. it was because uh, it was kind of like a trap. YouTube would say, oh, you have a lot of views, become part of the YouTube partnership program. And then they would be like, oh, actually you don't qualify and your channel is actually, uh, does not go with the terms of services. So we're shutting down your channel. So I got that email from YouTube and I was like, okay, well, I'm just not gonna do anything with it. And so far they haven't, you know, I have some of my old stuff on there and they haven't mm-hmm. cared. Um, and then I, I love watching YouTube. I watch YouTube more than I watch TV. And I try to like, one time I got in front of the camera and I was like, I'm gonna do a beauty tutorial because at the time that's what I really liked. I really like beauty stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this camera ain't cutting it. Oh, I look ugly. I don't look like a YouTuber. You know, I don't, I don't fit the mold of these people that are doing beauty tutorials, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna delete this video, right? And then um, I did make a video about going vegan for a while and I think I put up like two videos and then I was like this isn't me I can't like get in front of the camera this is like so much anxiety and then um when I met my husband he got me a note four Mm -hmm. and um I wanted it to know what it could do like what so I started looking at tutorials and I was like oh this is great like there's tutorials on how to use this phone how to use the apps and stuff like that and then I started Mm -hmm. to find out things that I can do on my own but I I only had one phone, so I couldn't really record what I was doing on my phone. Like I couldn't really see, um, but I would follow a lot of YouTubers on how to do it. Well, my Note 4 was kind of kicking the bucket, right? Mm-hmm. And my husband got me a Note 7. So I got the Note 7 and then I, again, I would start looking at tutorials and stuff. And then Samsung was like, okay, we're gonna throttle the battery on the Note 7. And then people were like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with my phone. There's only a charges at 60%. And at that time I, I didn't make any videos. I was, I was, I started to go to like YouTube pages, YouTube groups and be like, not YouTube, sorry, Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, um, I figured out how to do it. Um, let me walk through it with you. And then we would be like a messenger and I'd be like, okay, now do this. Okay, now do that. And then after knowing, like helping people how to fix it so that the battery would charge to 100%, I did a written tutorial. And mm-hmm. then people were like, can you do a video tutorial? And I was like, okay, cool. So I did a video tutorial. And then I was like, oh, I really like doing, I really like doing tutorials. So it kind of just went from there. I was like, I started making a little bit more uh, video tutorials. At first it was like, no sound. I would just put music. I wouldn't say anything. Then people are like, can you actually talk? And I'm like, uh, okay. yeah. And, my, and then it's like people would like gradually ask more of me. And so that's how, you know, that's how I got here. So do you do tech stuff like for a day job? No, I don't. No. Okay. So right now I'm doing YouTube full time. Okay. Uh, but before I, um, I just did desk job I just did desk work that's all I did but um even in that type of environment I noticed that I would be pulled in for training like hey Mm -hmm. you know train this person train that person and then um after doing tutorials on YouTube I would ask uh, the company I was like hey um can I get Camtasia and I could do some video tutorials for you guys for my Mm -hmm. department and they'd be like oh sure great so then I would also do video tutorials for the company but Oh, it was hard. Not because uh, of the content, but because uh-huh. the the laptops that they gave us was not very powerful. So it would mm-hmm. take longer than it did if I was to do it on my computer. But yeah, I, I would do it just because uh, everybody needed it. Yeah, I could see you doing like, um, what is it, uh, teaching classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted it to be a teacher when I was younger. I wanted it to be a lot of things. But I remember no, teacher, I wanted it to be a teacher. <laughs> like a yeah, tech exactly. teacher. <laughs> well, well, I, I, I wanted it to be like just any type of teacher, right? Okay. Um, I wanted it to be into education. But then I saw how uh, teachers were getting bullied, not only by the students, but then also by the school. And I'm like, yeah, um, I already have enough anxiety in my life. I would yeah. be able to handle, you know, being an actual teacher teacher. Yeah, I, I, you know, shout out anybody because a lot of my family members, they're in education. A lot of my best friends in education. And I'm like, you know, my hat goes off to you because I don't have the patience for that. Like this, the classes I used to teach, so I used to teach cybersecurity too. 
that's fine you know because you're just teaching grown people how to get through some courses and whatnot but to have to deal with kids and all these other personalities on top of the staff yeah and the yeah, I'm, I'm not built for that though, like their emotions yes. are <laughs> yeah I'm not built for that especially seeing yeah. these kids nowadays because I started when I started streaming last year and I got into Twitch and of course there's a lot of young people on Twitch which is why I kind of like you know why I fell in love with I fell in love with Jay before then but a lot of other like older YouTubers because I'm like you know mm -hmm. We exist. <laughs> I'm like, we yeah, built yeah. all of this stuff. I was like, we yeah. built the video games, we built the technology. I'm like, but why is it that when it comes to like online content, it's only a handful of us here and there? Because I'm like, all the time I'm seeing people, I'm seeing people like way younger than me. So people ask me my age. I'm like, man, I don't even feel like talking about my age. You know, let's just play a game or something. <laughs> I don't even want to talk yeah, about because yeah. I'm like, I'm grown. And I don't feel like you sitting there giving me no dad jokes and none of that stuff. I was like, so no, nah, let's, just, let's <laughs> just play a game. But I say that to say yeah. I started doing Twitch. And when I got into Twitch, it's a lot of young people streaming games. I found so many kids going through all kinds of stuff. They're like de de being depressed about things, having suicidal thoughts. And so they're asking me for it. I'm just giving out advice. And all of a sudden, people start flocking to me. Well, how did you handle this situation? How did you handle this situation? And I'm like, man, it's like tearing me up. So I can only imagine from a teacher standpoint, like you looking at these kids face to face. And yes. they're coming to you with all of their problems from home and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah like you, I wouldn't build for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, but I like teaching people that want to learn things on their own. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that people go on YouTube and they search, "How do I do this?" and then my yeah. video pops up. It's like you made a choice, or the algorithm recommended, but you made a choice to click on that video to see if it's something that's for you, and so you actually try out the steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Now, the videos I don't like, like you said, when you first started on, <laughs> where they yeah. actually show how to do something, but there's no audio or nothing to it. You're just seeing the cursor move across the screen. And now, did you put words in your videos? The yes, older I stuff? Did. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so, for example, I was doing tutorials on the Note 7 and how uh -huh. to do this and that, whatever. Well, um, I got Camtasia. And it's like you would highlight certain, like make certain things yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Or focus in on something. So I made sure that when I did tutorials, I would do that, like focus on this, click on that. And then I've realized that I can connect my mouse on the phone and people can see the mouse. So that made it a lot easier to do tutorials. So then I would do it that way. Like there's so many, there's so many cues when mm -hmm. it comes to doing a tutorial. Um, and I really learned that when I was doing one-on-one -on -one with people, because I would say, hey, click on this. And they'll be like, I don't know what you mean. And I was like, it's, <laughs> it's this color. It says this word. It's on this section of the phone, like top right, bottom left, you know, teaching mm -hmm. people, like giving them those type of cues verbally. I, I realized that that also helped visually and then mm -hmm. um, auditory as well, because some people, they learn better through hearing. Some people learn better by just doing it, just click, click, click. And some people need those type of visual cues. So mm -hmm. um, I would kind of perfect it um, as I continue to do different types of tutorials. Yeah, yeah, your video was good. Thank you. So, um, so now you went into YouTube. So how did you yeah. start growing your channel? Um, I started growing my channel because people would ask me uh, how to do different things. And mm -hmm. there's some videos that are just not there anymore because it's like, it's just no longer relevant. But um, I would start doing tutorials, but then I would also join different types of groups. And the groups would be like, hey, I don't know how to do that. And I would make a like a quick tutorial on that and then I would put it on there. And mm -hmm. then I was like, okay, actually, you know what? They kind of need a more detailed one, right? So then I would mm -hmm. make it a little bit more detailed. And then, um, there's a, a great quote by Robin Williams. He, he obviously plays the genie in um, Aladdin, but there was a Saturday morning show uh, where they would talk about different people in history. And mm -hmm. in it, the narrator was saying, uh, great minds think alike. And then Robin Williams like, nope, that's wrong. Great minds think for themselves, right? So mm -hmm. I call myself a power user. There's a lot I of like things that, that I do. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I do with my tech. I push mm -hmm. it to the limit and it's either to have fun or to just 
when I do a task, it takes less clicks or it's just more easier. So mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of the things that I did could probably help someone else, right? So mm -hmm. for example, I did a live stream about how I can take my note and um, put it on the computer. And I figured that out because I was on my computer and I was tired of having to pick up my phone to then game and then put it down, right? A game, mm -hmm. then, but if I could trans, uh, if I could basically transmit what's on the screen on the computer, then mm -hmm. I could do my tasks. And then while something is rendering, I would go to my game and, you know, so I was like, yeah, I'll do a live stream about that. And then people were like, could you connect a controller to it? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then I figured out, like, okay, yeah, I could connect my PS4 controller. And then I found a site that showed you 30 games that like allow you to use your PS4 controller with your phone, but then also connect it to your computer. Um, the great thing about that though, is that that's not the only thing that you can do. Um, and the reason is a lot of people talk about DEX, right? Like, oh, DEX is great because it, it's like a PC on, on your computer, mm -hmm. right? But the awesome thing about a different program that people don't really talk about is Samsung Flow, where whatever is on your actual phone, mm -hmm. you can put it on your PC and you can use your mouse and click on things and interact with it like if it was on your PC. Mm -hmm. And you can do it via Wi-Fi, but I recommend doing it via um USB type C because there's no lag, right? Right. So now not only can you possibly game, but do your emails, all of that great stuff. And just have whatever you see on your phone is what you're gonna see on your computer. Um, and obviously it's great for gaming, but you can use it for just about anything. Right. And that's what I was telling, um, you know, I was having a discussion with uh, Jay about that. I'm like, I actually like how they part, no, not Jay, was it cons? Somebody. I didn't do this many episodes, <laughs> but we're yeah, yeah. I was talking about how Samsung now has partnered up with Microsoft and they actually have that built into uh, the Windows operating system. Now, yeah, yeah, now you said actual hard line connection. Yeah, it's going through Wi-Fi. But yeah, you actually see everything that's on your device. You can make phone calls similar to what you see with, you know, Mac OS 10 and all, you know, iPhones and stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I do love that. Not, you know, and I'm a I'm a Android person, just like I am an iPhone person, Apple person. But that's what made me switch over to the Galaxy side of the house because now, like you said, I use my Android phone for like business, business relationships, or you know, other friends and stuff. And yeah, it's easy now. I can just do it directly from the computer as opposed to having to pick my phone up and respond to messages and stuff. Like if I get a notification, same thing as you know, your iPhones, you see it all over your your um Mac OS 10 and stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, I love the integration. And one of the biggest complaints I had was a lot of people weren't talking about that. Like they were talking about, oh, you know, the cameras and the phone sounds good. And you know, it's got a new processor in it, all the screens. I was like, okay, like you said, productivity wise, what yeah. is the, the most I can get out of this phone productivity wise, I can use it outside of the traditional phone. Cause when it comes to phones, I'm like, they all pretty yeah. much do the same thing, unless, yes. you know, you're doing something that you don't, that most people don't typically use them for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here's another tip about Samsung Flow. You can use mm -hmm. it with a Samsung tablet. You can use it with the S, Tab S Pro, and then the 7S as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a tutorial about this in the future. But I figured out um, because my daughters didn't want to record me dancing. They didn't want to help me and I <laughs> needed somebody. I needed, I needed to know if I was in the frame and I didn't want to use my front facing camera because I wanted to use the good cameras that were on the back. Right. Well, you can do the same thing with Samsung Flow on your tablet, right? And then use the, and so you can see what the camera's doing. You can make sure mm -hmm. you're in the shot. A, with the S Pen, hit record, do your dance, and then, you know, stop it. And stop then, it. Then, then, yeah. And, but you could tell you could use it basically as a viewfinder your mm -hmm. samsung um your samsung tablet as a viewfinder so i was like oh yeah this is great i don't need i don't need my daughters <laughs> for this no nah, i had never thing. i've never heard of flow so yeah i might need to check that out too because like i said my yeah. stuff is through wi-fi and it, it does lag every now and then when uh -huh. i'm trying to check something i always have to hit refresh on it yeah. So you've always uh, also, been an Android person. Um. Yes. Uh huh. I've always been an Android. I did actually get an iPhone. I got the iPhone XR, mm -hmm. and I was just I felt so limited. I couldn't <laughs> do it. So uh, I know people enjoy a Mac, but um, I like 
the customization and being able to sideload things. And I love the freedom that Android and Windows brings. Mm -hmm. But see, yep. but you use the phone. And that's a lot of the complaints I have about people when they say, oh, Android is better than iPhone. I'm like, OK, what are you using the phone for? If it's just social media and you're looking at YouTube or you po you taking pictures and stuff, I was like, you know, you're doing the exact same thing. I'm like, I couldn't, re if I want to recommend one, I would recommend iPhone for security. But I'm like, yeah. if you're just doing it for basic stuff, just get what you like. <laughs> like, yeah. just get what you like. Cause I'm like, they both do the exact same thing. And everybody got the same yeah, picture I quality now. I don't use it for basic stuff. So no, you example, don't know, like, right? Yeah. So one of the things that I love about my note is the S Pen, right? And mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I love to do with it is being able to go to certain types of sites and apps that you can't copy and paste stuff, but you can do it with the S Pen. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, like if I want to copy a hashtag or something like that, I just hold the little. Um, let me actually put that. I hold this little button in the middle. And mm -hmm. then it brings out the little um, cursor. I highlight it, and then I copy it and I put it on my stuff. Or, uh, for example, when I um, get stuff ready for Gadget Chat to get the articles ready, we put it on Trello. Well, not mm -hmm. only do I need to get the URL, but I also need to get the, the title of it. So I'll copy the title, and then I'll copy the URL. The good thing about, um, about Samsung is that it saves the last 15 things that you did so i don't have to copy and paste and then go back between apps i just copy twice and then mm -hmm. i go in and i just paste twice right and then that also goes with screenshots so i love being able to take a screenshot of something and it's not just i'm not limited to the canvas of my screen i can keep going down keep going down keep going down so that's really great for receipts as well yeah so it's really good for that and there's so many things that i do throughout my day with technology that most people don't even think about doing and not it's not just because i'm a content creator but just like stuff in general like mm -hmm. even let's say you're writing down a list right there's apps that you can do that with where you can share stuff but then you could just use the google services with that whether it's like mm -hmm. cheese or something like it's just it's technology like really does save a lot of time and it also helps you connect with people better yeah, and that's the, I think we all learned about that from from what was going on last year. I mean, it's still going on today, but we got a little bit more freedom today. But yeah, last year, we learned a lot about, which is why I take it soda now, how to make relationships and build relationships online. Because the whole pandemic had everybody <laughs> locked down. Yeah. So people realized, oh, I need some updated cameras. I need an updated computer <laughs> because all of my stuff yeah, is trash yeah. at home. <laughs> yes, yeah. I remember we had, me and my husband, we had bought a printer mm -hmm. like probably a few months before the pandemic. And that printer is like double the amount than for what we bought it at the time. And it's like simple things like that, that you just need to have at home that, you know, there was just a convenience factor that we had, whether mm -hmm. we're going to different type of facilities that was just always there for us. But just um, having that type of resource, like self uh, reliance, is, mm -hmm. is so important with technology. Um, speaking of making connections, um, I wanted to talk about uh, something that I'm a part of that I'm really, really happy about. It's called the okay. Video Creator Expo. Okay. And um, so basically the Video Creator Expo is the goal of that event is basically to help creators by um, crowdsourcing a mm -hmm. live audience uh, through the virtual events. And then we also um, provide a playlist. So for people who have missed it, it's like completely free. It's on YouTube. So the first one was done on February 27th. Um, mm -hmm. Swarthy Daisy, she was the one who did it. And she asked me to be a part of it, which was great. Ooh. So basically what she did was <laughs> she said, OK, I'm going to put everybody's either video premiere or live stream in this playlist. Everybody mm -hmm. has a certain time slot. And we told people, hey, we're doing this event. So people will go live to the event. And then once that person's uh, presentation was over, they would tell them, OK, go to the next presenter. So it's like all of a sudden you have like live a whole bunch of people on mm -hmm. your channel that you would have never have seen before because there was a lot of diversity um, mm -hmm. in the people that were presenting the different types of things. And you were getting like subscribers. If you were already um, monetized, you were getting super chats and it was great. And people were learning lots of things that they had not 
learned before. Mm -hmm. And it was such a great event. And uh, me and my friend Barry Johnson, we were like, okay, so when's the next one? And she was like, oh, um, uh, I, I, maybe annually. I wasn't even thinking about doing it again. So the reason for her doing it was because um, her and her mother would set up like a, like a Black History Month um, mm -hmm. event in real life, right? But because mm -hmm. of the pandemic, that wasn't going to be able to be possible. And so she just decided kind of to like bring that theory over to YouTube. And I was like, girl, you're sitting on gold. This is great. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's awesome. So the next so the next event is going to be on June 19th, Juneteenth on purpose. And um, it's going to be the same thing. We have a time slot of people and mm -hmm. we're going to the, the people are going to go over. They're going to go to each presenter, each presenter. And it's, you know, going to enrich their YouTube channels. And it's going to be great. So, like, for example, like, bigger YouTubers will get, like, different audiences that they had not otherwise have gotten. And then smaller YouTubers are going to get, uh, as well, a different type of audience that they would have not gotten. But also, like, just a bigger audience in general. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Like, just being able to learn um, how to set something up like this and just being part of just really really smart people it, like i'm really really happy about it <laughs> so what time is the event on june june 19th it's at 10 30 in the morning eastern standard time until when about eight o'clock at, at night or it ends at four okay at four yep yep and so it's it's gonna be great um we have we're finalizing the lineup and everything and um by at least june 1st we'll be able mm -hmm. to then but right now um if uh, there is a website created for it so you can you can go and see the playlist and um you can bookmark it um or you can just go back to the website and it'll tell you what the time slots in and everything that's going there's also social media handles for it on twitter and instagram and facebook and mm -hmm. it is going to kick off on swarthy's channel so she's the host she's gonna tell everybody what the time slot is and just talk about the event and everything and then she'll kick it off to the next presenter well the first presenter actually yeah i like that because i mean we did something similar to that in the gaming community we had one um one she's yeah she's a take care too she got she went viral for some stuff but she does pc builds and she started doing like this whole gaming thing a 24-hour gaming stream and so everybody signed up for a two-hour time slot and we would shift from each individual person and you just have two hours to push your content play the games mm -hmm. and then just get more people to actually sub to your channel and well yeah so oh. sub to your channel so yeah I, you know i like stuff like that yeah, so you said it was blocks of two hours? Yeah, two hours, yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is going to be blocks of 15 minutes. Oh, the talk? See, that? so you get a lot of uh, creators in a little time frame there. Yes, we have about uh, 20 slots filled so far. Wow, that's good, though. And I think that's, uh, that's it, yeah, just 20 slots filled. Yeah, that's it. So in a little 15 minutes time frame, what you have to just talk about your channel or... Like, what did you um, do? So Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even talk about that. Yeah, so it's um, the theme is um, how to pivot from offline to online. And it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be about what it is that you did during the pandemic. It could just be a point in your time mm -hmm. where you shift your focus, not saying, oh, I'm going to deal, I'm not going to deal with offline stuff anymore, but either taking your business or your brand online and what mm -hmm. kind of tips you can provide someone who is wanting to make that type of change. Yeah, no, that's something everybody should be doing in their business. Like I said, we <laughs> if you didn't learn that last year, you should know it now that, yeah, your stuff, brick and mortar is great, but you have to have a presence online as well, too, because a lot of people, pandemic or not, some people just don't feel like getting out going anywhere. And if I can get online and do something in your business and have items shipped to me or delivered, yeah. you know, that's great. It's the ease of access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we all yeah. are becoming lazy people. <laughs> The one on February 27th was about how to get monetized on different mm -hmm. types of platforms. So some people were talking about YouTube, some people were talking about Clubhouse, some people were talking about, um, what's it called again? TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a lot of different types of platforms talking about it, you know, on the, on the YouTube and the playlist is still there. So okay. it's great to be a part of it live, but if you miss it or you can't make all of, all of the uh, presenters, uh, you could always go back and just check out the playlist. Great. So how long did it take for you to get monetized? 
uh, about three, about three to four years, it took me to get monetized, and that's because I wasn't doing it consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, and funny story, so I have a video that actually kind of went viral, has a million views, and it happened mm-hmm. during the pandemic. So mm-hmm. October of 2018, I was, um, I did a tutorial on how to use your Android phone as a webcam. Mm-hmm. And it was just, oh, I, I needed to do this because I was going on the live stream and there was a new update on um, on Windows that just like made my um, camera on my laptop useless. So I started searching the web and tried to see if they had any videos and there wasn't really any videos on how to do that. And so after I figured out, I made a video about that, 2018. Mm-hmm. A year later, the pandemic happens and people are trying to figure out how to use their phone as a webcam. And so that kind of took off. But um, also during the pandemic, I was going through some health issues and Mm -hmm. uh, we had like a small house fire downstairs. So I wasn't really online. I wasn't really checking my analytics. Like I was away from the Internet. Meanwhile, my video is blowing up and I'm just like, I come back and I'm like, oh, I'm at 900,000 views. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe I should put out some more videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, you know, I would just do like tutorials here and there. And then I finally like hit 1,000 subs and mm-hmm. then I got monetized. And then, so yeah, that's how that happened to me. That's good. So you put stuff out in the universe <laughs> yeah. and it happened. Yeah. <laughs> you be there early on and you think, oh, nobody's going to see it. And then a year later, a year two later, it blows up. Yeah, because last year is terrible. If all tech stuff, is, mm-hmm. ter- it still is terrible because you still can't get GPUs. Yeah. Now you can get some uh, webcams, but yeah, GPUs and other hardware. Yes, mm-hmm. because now we have a silicon shortage. Yes, yeah. So, so I'm really lucky that my husband... Um, allowed me to create kind of like my dream PC when I when we did because a lot of the parts that we have in this PC right now is so expensive so that's like another Mm -hmm. type of thing that really happened um when it comes to editing videos I know that a lot of people like they talk about using laptops and, and tablets and things like that uh but for me and especially the type of thing that I do I had to get a really really powerful pc and i'll tell you the specs okay first thing that i'm really happy about and then mm-hmm. i'm glad that we did was um our ram 128 gigs of ram like no lag whatsoever while i'm editing on adobe premiere after effects wait wait all that wait stuff. how big a uh, motherboard do you have it's it's a regular size motherboard yeah, Man, your PCI slot support, support. That, 128 gigs. Wow. Yeah. Um, so each slot, I think, maxes out at 16 gigs, mm-hmm. if I'm doing the math correctly. But it all, it, after filling up all of the slots, it's 128 gigs of RAM. So 128 gigs of RAM. Mm-hmm. Um, a two M, a two M.2 um, solid state hard drives. Mm-hmm. Um, one regular hard drive that you know has a spinning disk that has 12 terabytes so that when i'm done editing the video i just put it in there in that mm-hmm. in that hard drive and it's an external one um liquid cooling mm-hmm. um it's an intel it's an intel chip and i know a lot of people are like you should have went amd i was like hey. um intel so but it does pretty good it's you mm-hmm. know it's probably because the ram is compensated for it um what else can i say about it gosh why am i drawing a blank what kind of Intel processor? You got an i7, i9? i9. I know you i9, okay. 9, i9, 1920. Hold on, let me pull up my schematics over here. Yeah, why are you doing that too? Yeah, content creators or new content creators or anybody that's doing anything and you got a lot of data. Yes, get an external drive. <laughs> get an yeah. external drive and back all your stuff up to your external drive, even video games. I know you think it's crazy, but yes, you can still play your video games from your external drives. And I do it all the time and I have no lag, no delay on it <laughs> because mm-hmm. I don't like buying a ton of internal storage. And I have, I think, two terabytes of internal storage. But you don't know that once you start recording videos or like even recording game footage and stuff like that, that terabyte will go quick. So yes, I recommend yes. get some external yeah. storage. I found it. So it's a 
Intel Core i9-7920X CPU, 2.9 gigahertz. Okay. Yes. So you got the uh, 7 series. No, that's still good, because I, I still have that in mind, too. Now, what kind of GPU do you have? Oh, it is... Oh, I should have closed that. I know it has 11 gigs of RAM in um, in the GPU, in the dedicated GPU. Let's see if it'll tell me here. Nope, I need to go to device manager. And why are you doing a lot? What do you use to get a GPU? Go ahead, okay. NVIDIA. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a real. I mean, it's, it is really it's a good one. I'm I'm rocking the uh, 1070. I want, <laughs> I wanted the the 30 series, but mm -hmm. you can't find them anywhere. They're nowhere to be found. <laughs> and I'm yeah, still pissed off about that. Yeah, I remember when they first came out and they were talking about how. Huh? Oh, it melted my PC. I'm like, what? I guess that always happens at least once or twice, right? The 1080? No, or the, the 30 series? The 30 I series. Haven't, I haven't. Well, yeah, I did see some Yeah, it was overheating. Yeah, I, but I mean, somebody's buying them and you still can't get them anywhere. Yeah. I and mean, they're still clocking better than even the 30. So I keep my eye out for them because I do want to upgrade my GPU because I do like content. I, I game too. So I'm like, I wanted to have something faster to you know, push my gaming content so my stuff so i could run videos and stream and stuff at the same time without having any lag and run it you know a high performance speeds because right now i have an i7 processor and i have a, a gtx 1070 uh -huh. and yes yeah, it starts to lag after a while and you start getting frame rate drops and people say oh why don't you do dual pc gaming i'm like i would if stuff was available <laughs> nothing's yeah, available. yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah th things are not available that's oh. yeah, that is a big major problem but in a way it's kind of like a good problem <laughs> it, for certain people but the problem i have is that you know with the bots we're buying everything up if it was regular people buying it up i'm cool with that because like i've gone past like micro center when it was released in the 3060 early this year mm -hmm. and they had a huge line outside of micro center because i passed by micro center when i'm going to my office and i'm thinking okay you know, if the line is not bad, I'm gonna swing by there on my way into work and grab me a new GPU and then beeline to the office. Man, I pass by Micro Center and it's like nine o'clock in the morning and it's a line wrapped around the building. And Micro Center does wow. not open up until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. I was like, yep, it's gone. <laughs> I was like, yeah. whatever inventory they had is, is, is gone. Yeah. Well, the reason why I said it's kind of like a good problem because that means that there are more people out there that have these types of computers, not only just mm -hmm. people, but underprivileged people. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it's, yeah, it's kind of expensive, but that means that the kind of like the lower tier stuff that's still pretty good, people are still buying those as well. So now that there's like more people on the internet, uh, more people with webcams, more, you know, that, they'll mm -hmm. start to kind of say, what more can I do? And then, you know, somebody's tutorial or somebody's video or, or things like that, mm -hmm. people will go there. So th it's good that there's that interest in there. Cause I remember it was like, it used to just be for the nerds, right? But yeah. it's not for the nerds anymore. It's for, you know, people who just want to show their life or just do more on the web. Right. And the problem is, well, it's not, it's, I mean, it's a good problem that I, that I love when people start building their own PCs. And so now you have to now because it's like Lego pieces and they get excited about it and now they want to build another PC or add on to the one they have. So, yes, that is a good thing. I like to see people learning and, you know, venturing outside of just being a user to actually building the stuff out themselves and loading the operating system on there and learning what, you know, every what everything does. So, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I do like that. No, probably, yeah, you know, inventory, but as <laughs> long as yeah. people are buying them, I'm happy about that. The only thing I don't like are the bots. Because they, like you said, now people are yeah. realizing I need new up-to-date hardware. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to see happen is the inventory fills up. And so all the lower yes. end stuff, like where our specs are at, it becomes cheaper. So now the people, like underprivileged people, they can go in and buy like a 1070 or a 1080, something that's really good because the lower performance things, no, I don't, yeah, anything less than that, 
I know it's on sale right now. Yeah, I don't recommend it at all because when you start playing, even if you're playing games, and this is for gamers and this is for content creators, if you're yeah. doing basic or basic stuff, yeah, you can grab a laptop. You don't have to worry about any of these things and be looking at CPUs and stuff. <laughs> but if yeah, you're trying yeah. to get into <laughs> creating stuff, I don't care if it's digital work, digital artwork, or like I said, you're doing streaming or any of that stuff. Yes, 1070, 1080, all the way up. That's what you're gonna need. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I, I, and I, I will say though, I created my first video on my iPad. I edited my first video on my iPad, and I love it. Yeah. Because yeah. I was looking at getting the new uh, one of the the Mac Minis, the one with the M1 processor in it. Because yeah. yeah, I don't know. So that's what I'm going to ask you. Like, what kind of software do you use for editing? Because the stuff I use, like even I have Adobe, and I have other software called yeah. Wondershare. Yeah. So Wondershare, even when I now they push out an update. I like it, but now it takes forever to render stuff. So when you make a video and you export it out, it creates that little 60 second like clip that you can use on all your social media platforms. But it's taken two hours just to even process a video. Oh, that's really hard. Yeah, it takes me uh, five minutes to render something. The most it's ever been has been 15 minutes for me to render a video. It's like that. Um, but I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit mm -hmm. my videos. When I screen record, I use Camtasia. Mm -hmm. And yep, so those are the two things that I use for my regular videos. And then obviously when I make digital works and things like that, I use a combination of Adobe, um, After Effects, Adobe Premiere, Canva, just everything you know that's out there, I dabble. In. So let's talk but, about that then, mm -hmm. your Go digital ahead. content. You're, so you make all that stuff from scratch? Some things I do make from scratch. Some things are actually templates. Okay. And it's amazing what you could do with a template and then just make it your own. Like, for mm -hmm. example, when I do promo videos for, hey, I'm going to be going live. So I do like a little promo video. Um, mm -hmm. I, I start off with a template and then I just make sure that I have my, um, my font, my colors, and my images like shapes and things like that so basically the template i'm just using it for the movement right mm -hmm. and then kind of like for where to place things because some of these templates have really creative places to do things now there are times mm -hmm. where i do things from scratch and then i just turn that scratch thing into a template as well so i do both and i do that because i know i understand that when it comes to the internet um if people just see something kind of repetitive, then they're not going to pay attention to it. But if you use a different type of the template or design, but you have the same branding with your colors, people are going to be like, oh, this is new. I wonder what they're talking about now. So mm -hmm. I have to kind of use templates. I can't always work from scratch because of people's attention span. Okay. Now, what got you started into that? Because I did um, go to your website. I checked out some of your stuff that was out there. I mean, it looks good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, what got me started into that was my husband. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, this is an expensive computer. We got to make money out of it, right? So <laughs> um, I started by just like helping my friends. Like, hey, uh, do you want an intro or outro? Hey, I see that you're doing something consistently. What if you had like this one file that kind of like just represented you? And they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. And then I went from, okay, cool. I could do this successfully. Um, I look at how long it takes and then I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I'll go ahead and build a website and make some money off of this as well. And I learned how to do websites um, when I was 13. Mm -hmm. So it, what took long was, and I, I, was, I was still sad about this, is the fact that all of these like website templates, mm -hmm. they're all on light mode. They don't have any dark modes. So I had to go in and like read the CSS code and um, the PHP and the Java and like try to figure out, okay, this is this color. I need the opposite of that. I need to, mm -hmm. to make this dark. And because I, I know that people that were gonna be coming to my website were gonna be techie people and mm -hmm. I wanted it to cater to the aesthetics and their eyes, I, I went for dark mode. So that, that website took me about three months. Yeah, yeah. That's not my forte. Like I, <laughs> I mean, I can make them, but it's still mm -hmm. like when people start critiquing, I say, hey man, you know, I try to stay in my own lane. I know how to make them. <laughs> I know yeah. how to read the HTML and the CSS. I know how to read the JavaScript on there. 
but I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to like designing and getting the colors and stuff, I was like, that that's just not my skill set. And I'm like, yeah. you went to my website, so I'm like, hey, it drew you in some kind of way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, even like when I picked out my colors for Tech Valor, um, mm-hmm. I had updated the colors because I wanted to make sure that it, that the colors, I wanted to still be blue, purple, and green, but mm-hmm. I wanted it to make sure that it was visible in light or dark scenarios. So I don't even remember the name of the website, but I just typed like light and dark colors, like in a background. And then I, it would tell me, all right, this color looks good in a dark background and looks good in a light background. So that's kind of like where I also came up with the shade of my colors as well. So if I ever want to start from scratch and just do light mode, like I want to be able to have the option to put my logo on a light or a dark mm-hmm. background, it's still visible. It's still good doesn't like yeah not yeah i do like your logo yeah it's nice but um it's also as well um i get joy out of kind of like making people's dreams come true whether Mm -hmm. it's tutorials or whether it's having some type of digital content where it's like hey i'm gonna slap this in the beginning and it's like this is my theme song and this is my theme video (laughs) like i i like the feeling of like giving something to someone and then they're like hey this is me like this doesn't Mm -hmm. look like anybody else's so even though yeah i do have some templates on there i do have options where i can create something for you from scratch and so that one's a little bit more you know it's not template but (laughs) it's you know it it comes with it but it's it still feels really good no yeah that's a good thing because like the same thing with me when i'm like editing my videos it's like the people say, oh, you know, once you, um, you know, start sending some of this stuff out to have other people help you out with it. I'm like, it, I will. But when I'm put like, I put background music to my videos. And so when yeah. I select my background music, I go by the mood. So I'm like, depending on who the person is in the energy and stuff. So that's when I go and like, I will literally listen to 15 to 20 different background music songs before I bring find the right one to bring over and actually add to the videos. A lot of people don't don't know that the people listen to my stuff. Yeah, I actually, I listen to the people, my guests that's on my show <laughs> or the yeah. topic. And I actually pick the, the music out to fit alongside that. Cause I'm like, I think that music plays an important part in people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so okay. like, even with the okay. intros and stuff, it's like you say, you know, if I have, like you make an amazing intro for somebody they can say, oh, wow, that's actually mine. I'm going to go out here and boost this up. Look at what I'm doing. Look at my business I got going on. And, oh, if you need somebody to do something for you, you know, take Valor can knock one out for you. So, yeah, I'm the same way with that. Yeah, it's all about the vibes. And I think that's one of the things when I was when I was younger and I was making anime music videos is mm-hmm. I was working. I was working with works of art that was already high quality right mm-hmm. like with a youtube like you have to cut out the pauses and all that stuff like you you got to cut out the fat right but this is mm-hmm. something that's like already already beautiful you know you just got to change the narrative or tell the story different not only that but the timing so you got to choose a song with you know obviously the lyrics is going to choose is, is going to do it but the music is the timing and that's kind of like when for example when i do video when I do my videos I mm-hmm. look at when I'm saying something okay maybe I pause a little too long here because I'm thinking about the timing not about my background music but the person that is watching something okay maybe they kind of are going to divert here or maybe they need an emphasis over here uh, maybe I need to change my voice there so things like that and I think that's why I went towards Adobe because Trust me, I've tried everything except for uh, Final Cut Pro. And that was because I asked people that have Final Cut Pro, I was like, when you're actually editing and you play back in the preview, does it stutter? And they'll be like, yes. Okay, I don't want that. I needed something that when I put in my animations, mm-hmm. when I play it back, I can see the timing of it. Because down to the millisecond, I'm like, all right, let me add here or let me subtract. In, in all fairness now though, you have 128 gigs of RAM. <laughs> that, that's My- why I needed 100. That's why I needed 128 gigs of RAM because I'm just so minute and I needed to, I needed to see like when I added a transition, if maybe mm-hmm. the transition needed to be longer or shorter, because it can make or break someone's concentration out of that video. You want them to be immersed. And mm-hmm. that's what I want. I want them to be like, okay, I'm going through this journey. This journey is great. What? 
you just took me off the beat you know it's like oh my eyes like that's jarring like that's a jarring transition but you can't tell if it's a jarring transition if you watch the video over and and then um like for example with filmora i tried mm -hmm. filmora so i would render the whole thing right i would render the whole thing and then i'd be like okay i need to add or subtract but that was taking long even though it would take probably like what five minutes to render mm -hmm. It was still a waste of time. So I needed something that I would be able to see it when I play it back as if it was already fully rendered. And one of the things that I love about Adobe is that you can almost fully render the whole thing before it's done. So like there's a there's a part in Adobe where you can say uh, render all effects and you're not going to touch the effects that you already did previously. It's there, right. it's done. You're, you're not going to go back to it. So then you can just focus on the effects and the timings and the transitions and everything moving forward. And it's like kind of already rendered from the previous one. And that, like, that's what I needed from Adobe Premiere. The Adobe, I'm not going to lie, Adobe Premiere is pretty convoluted. Kind of like, you know, for one thing that you could probably do in another, um, a video editing software. It takes like three steps on Adobe, but mm -hmm. I'm willing to um, exchange that for the fact that I can see something that's already completely rendered and I can move forward in confidence with what I'm editing. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm starting to do more stuff in Adobe because even the video I edited for my first time on my iPad, I did it in Adobe Rush. Now, pissed me off because I couldn't uh, render it out in my full 1080, uh, 60. For whatever reason, wouldn't do it, kept airing out. And once I dropped it down to 720p, 30 FPS, it, it finally uh, rendered it. But it still did it in like under yeah. 10 minutes, a full hour long video oh, under 10 good. minutes. But on that's my great. computer, my desktop computer, like I said, that takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Why? But now you limit it on, yeah, so it's, in Adobe Rush, so anybody, because in, in Adobe Rush, when you um, add it, when you edit this up on it, it's meant it's a mobile platform, so you can't add but so much like transitions and things to it. They only give you so many slots. Where in Premiere Pro, you know the sky's the limit. <laughs> the sky's yes. the limit. So I'm they like, okay, four. I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it got me so, and I love, I love Rush. And uh, one of the things that I actually started doing with Rush before that helped me transition to Premiere was I would start something out in Rush and mm -hmm. then with Rush, you can um, move it to Premiere and the, it'll be the same cuts and everything onto Premiere that you did on Rush. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm telling you. Oh, I you, just, you, just, you just, oh, you just taught me something yeah. new. I did not know that. The only thing is that you can't go backwards. You can't go from Premiere to Rush, but you can go from Rush to, um, to um, Adobe Premiere. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I would do is I would start off on my tablet or my phone with Adobe Rush, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would move over to my computer because, you know, it'll have the same thing from there. And then I would go from Rush to Premiere. And by doing that, it helped me gradually um, understand the mechanics of Premiere. Because mm -hmm. when I sat there, I'm telling you, I didn't even know that you had to create a sequence when you use Adobe Premiere. I, I, and, and there wasn't even a tutorial for that. I'm like, how do I add a video? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I'm trying to make a 1080p video. And I, it's like, you have to create a sequence. And I was talking about that with my twin sister. And she's like, isn't that dumb? And I'm like, it's not so dumb. <laughs> Why? Why do I have to make it so complicated? Yeah. All right, so as we as we wrap it up, tell people about where they can find you with all your platforms. And then one thing I ask people to, if you, you, well, you watch my other videos, <laughs> leave yeah. with a positive final thought because of so much you know chaos that's in the world right now. But yes, tell everybody where they can find you at, all your services that you offer, and then, you know, promote yourself. Uh, they can find me at techvalor.net. Uh, Tech Valor mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, I find out social platforms and I get the name Tech Valor right away. So if you search up Tech Valor, you'll find me anywhere. I'm most talkative on Twitter. Um, obviously, I post my videos on YouTube. Um, if you go to gadgetchats.com, it'll take you over to the podcast that I have with um, Gadget Goddess. And then um, every other week, Emily uh, Wilson comes on as well. Mm -hmm. And we talk about news and tech and, and, and things like that. Um, and then once a month, we have a, a guest. It's a lot of fun. We get to let loose a little bit. And 
yeah that's where you that's where you can find me and then um things that i could would want to leave like a positive note would be that um i know that for myself i struggled with not putting myself there out there on the internet because there wasn't people like me and i would say is that you need to be the person that you want to see so that would be my recommendation took me a long time to figure it out but yeah you have to be the person that you want to see on the internet yeah see i yeah i like that i'm gonna see i'm gonna piggyback off of that so i want to thank you again take valor for Megalina. Take Valor for appearing on the show. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I would love to have you back. Talk some more, do some more tech talk. Do some gaming. So I know you do some gaming. Talk about some up and coming games. Because I don't do the Fortnite and Call of Duty. That's not my forte. I leave that to these, the Thundercats. That's not my thing. <laughs> I play regular <laughs> games. But yeah, thank you for coming on. You know, I, I appreciate the conversation. I'm Antonio Hicks, Mr. AKA Escaping the Matrix. You can find me on pgdtv.online. All of my stuff is there from my Twitter to Facebook now and my YouTube, everything, everything is there. My final thoughts kind of piggyback off of that. One of the things I talk about in my only couch sessions is about being your authentic you. So yes, I encourage everybody to be your authentic you. you no, know, despite you know what anybody or you think anybody might think about you, be authentic to yourself. Because even if you don't see anybody else out there like you, be that beacon of light. Because if you put yourself out there, somebody else is feeling the exact same way. So you can be that lighthouse to attract more people in to do what you're doing, or actually just to come out and just you know be a part of you and your platform. So yes, always stay true to you. Love yourself no matter what self-care and mental health is an important part of life and it's a good thing to help you develop more self into who you are and who you, you're purposely supposed to be so thank you all for tuning in again i'm antonio hitsman's escaping the matrix love you guys happy podcasting